Sarah, can you talk about how President Obama would kind of give you the framework for a speech like that? Because he, he's a lawyer. I remember he, he would always give you like kind of point one, one A, one B. Yeah, um, how did, how literally, did that work? one A, yeah, one right. B. So I think what's interesting about President Obama is that um, he himself is a writer, and if he had time, would write the speeches better than we would himself. Um, but <laughs> Commander in Chief doesn't have time to write speeches. So. So oftentimes what would happen is, you know, you'd go in the Oval and you'd sit down with him and he would just start riffing. And then maybe f seven minutes in, he would say, okay, okay, so, here, so here's what I'm thinking. One, and then he would, you know, start, give, give you your, sort of your opening. You know, one, two, give you, you know, the next paragraph. Uh, one, one A, go back, give you that. And then he would sort of walk, walk you back through the outline. And it was so irritating as a writer because you had been sitting in your office trying to come up with a structure for hours. And you just spend 10 minutes with him. And he's got the whole thing down. It was both inspiring and incredibly annoying. Uh, he was really good at this. Uh, and, uh, and, and what was also interesting is I think one of the challenges of, of being a president, um, really any um, elected leader, I worked in the Senate for a senator for, for years and, and saw the same dynamic, which is that you're going from, from very different event to very different event in the course of a very busy day. So you know, he might be talking, having a meeting with me about the national prayer breakfast speech, but right before then, he was in the situation room talking about China with people who are way more important than I am. And then after that, he's going to some ceremony with the Girl Scouts. I mean, the day is so, is so fragmented, and your, your mind has to sort of very quickly shift. 